just declare our love to the Lord. Raise your voice and tell the Lord how much you love him. Because truly, he has loved us even before. He loved us before we could love him. He gave so much for us to be the way we are this day. Some of us are not even worthy of any good, great, good thing. It is just by the mercies and the loving kindness of God that we are. We had been written off. But because of the love of God, we are accepted back. We may have lost all that we lost. But because of the love of God, we are going to gain back. We have a God who loves us. We have a God who does not ask. I was asked about your state. He does not even want to know the kind of sin you have committed. Because of us, Christ died on the cross. Because of us, one who is sinless was made to be put on the cross for us. This is how much the Lord loves us. He committed his only son so that you who is in pain, you who is forgotten, you who has lost hope in life, that we may have hope in him. That is why I just want us to declare, we love you God. We love you King of kings and Lord of lords. This is a great day that you have given us, oh Lord. That we can talk about your love. Talk about your greatness. Talk about your power. Talk about your divine plan for humanity. Blessed be your holy name. We bless you Jehovah for this great moment. We are ready to listen from you. Holy Spirit confirm the will of God here. As it is in heaven. Thank you mighty king. In Jesus name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. Uh, the way, I don't love the way you celebrate. If you want to clap, you do it better. Especially it is because it is, it is about the Lord. Let's celebrate Jesus. Celebrate, 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 celebrate. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. And his mercies and you are forever. Amen. We may have our seats. We are blessed to be in the presence of the Lord this great day. To everyone who is listening this day, I want to say the Lord has a good plan. And from the beginning, the Lord purposed that man will live comfortable and man will enjoy the goodness of the Lord. I say enjoy the goodness of the Lord. Whoever you are, so long as you are created by God as man. I say as man. When I say as man, I mean every human being. You are a product of the goodness of the Lord. And you are divinely planned. Hallelujah. That's why I say even if you were born... And your mother keeps repeating it. That you are an accident. You are an unexpected baby. You came when they did not want you. That is their story. I say that is their story. God has a good plan. Hallelujah. There is no creation on earth who is here by mistake. You are divinely planned, divinely placed. Hallelujah. Today I want to talk about divine placements. Divine placement. Why do I want to talk about divine placement? Because God, from the beginning, expected man to live a life and a good life. From the beginning, he never wanted man to fail. From the beginning, he never wanted man to suffer. Hallelujah. Now I want you to turn
turn to your neighbor and say, even now, even now, God has a good plan. God has a good plan. And he divinely places people. Now, the problem is, when you are divinely placed and divinely assigned, because God will make sure that your allocation or your blessings are where he has placed you. Before you are where you should be, you can never get it. Am I talking to somebody? And if you lose focus of where the Lord wants you to be, you will toil in vain. I know I'm talking to somebody. Even preachers who preach the gospel away from where the Lord has allocated you. Sorry, has located you. Your allocation will never get you. You will struggle. You will speak of power which is not manifest. You will hear so many voices because you are in the wrong place. Jonah was created for Nineveh. So if you go beyond Nineveh, anywhere else, you are risking people's lives. Am I talking to somebody? For you to be where the Lord, for you to receive the blessings of God, for your allocation to get you, you must be where the Lord has located you. And the plan of God is that it shall be well with you. It shall be well with you. It shall be well with you. As so long as you obey, you shall eat the fruits of the land. Hallelujah. Now listen to this. The Bible in the book of Genesis chapter number 2. Verse number 15. The Lord placed Adam. And when the Lord placed Adam in the garden of Aden. There is what he told Adam. Till the land. Take care. Tend the land. Take care. That is all he had to do. The other story about the other tree was a warning. You may eat any other fruit. You may enjoy everything else here. Apart from the tree of knowledge. Instructions were very clear. And so if I were Adam, I would have no business with the tree of knowledge. I would not lose my focus and start diverting my focus to the tree of knowledge. Because everything the Lord has done for my comfortability is good. Hallelujah. But now in chapter number 3, from verse number 1 to verse number 6, well, the devil, the serpent appears. And he appears to the woman. But I want you to see. After asking the woman, did God say? What did God say? Then finally number six, verse number six says. And when the woman saw. Now listen to that. Verse number six, chapter number three, Genesis. Verse number six. When the woman saw the fruit of the lie, the tree of, sorry, the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye. It is when the woman saw. I want you to note that very carefully. It is when the woman, it was when the woman, before seeing, she was okay. She had no business with the tree of knowledge. Before getting diverted, she was okay. Now, let me talk to somebody. God's promises can only be actualized when 
he finds you operating at the right place of your life. And I repeat that again. Let him find you operating at the right place of your life. And God is not dictated by, by the state or the environment. Am I talking to somebody? He had to tell Abraham in Genesis chapter number 12, verse 1 and 2. Come out! Of your father's land. And I will take you. And then after taking you. I will bless you. I will make your name great. I will multiply you. Am I talking to someone? Hallelujah. Now there is something I want you to note. You must be in the right place. At the right time. Doing the right thing. Number two, it's God who decides where to place you. Aha, hallelujah. If you think business is not doing very well in Dandora Getare and you want to move to Runda and the Lord has purpose to bless you in Dandora Getare, then you will miss your blessings. Am I talking to somebody? It is God who decides where to place you because he has, he's the, the one who gives you grace. He's the one who deposits grace for wherever he has sent you. Am I talking to somebody? He will not place you where you cannot manage. In between the week I had a challenge. Somebody called me and told me I need to talk to you pastor. Because I think there is something wrong with Dandora Gitare. And you need to know this. And when I listened to the story, I was careful to listen very well. And I told her, please keep to your lane. You are called as a ship between the ship. And I know my calling. I was called as a ship between the fox or the, yes. My story of calling is different from their story of calling. My grace is not their grace. Mine is fight, theirs is just sit there. That is why Peter told Paul that you will go and preach to the Gentiles because they identified the grace in Paul for the Gentiles. But we will preach to the circumcised. I know I'm talking to somebody. And I want you to understand yourself. Don't run away from where you are because there is battle. God places you somewhere and gives you grace for the place. Hallelujah. Man is rooted where the assignment is. And if God takes you to a slum, because you are with God and the backing of God, you can turn the slum to an estate. Because there is grace for the people in the slum. Hallelujah. If everybody ran away from the slum, who Preach the gospel in the slum. Who is going to show the goodness of the Lord in the land? So the Lord has to identify somebody and pass you in the slum because you are the one who is going to take people to their destiny. God told Joshua that. Joshua, do not fear. Be bold. Be courageous because you are the one who will take people to their possession. Hallelujah. Tell somebody we have an assignment. And where the Lord blesses you, do not fear. Do not run away. If you try to run away like, like uh, Jonah, you will risk the lives of so many. Mm -hmm. I say you will risk the life of so many, you will also risk your own life. 
You think you are running for good? You run, you run to lose. Uh -huh. You run to lose. Somebody was there in the book of Ruth, chapter number one. The family of Naomi. They ran away from famine. From Jerusalem. The house of bread. They ran away. Thinking they are going to gather together and restore her and become rich. They thought they are going to gather together and increase. But instead of increasing, she lost everything. God have mercy on us. Instead of increasing, she lost everything. She had to go back to her land so that she gets back what was hers. Am I talking to somebody? So I want you to ask your neighbor, do you know where you are? You're not there by mistake. The Lord does not make a mistake. Hallelujah. He blesses you for a reason. There is a grace here that you will receive that you may never receive it anywhere else. Aha! Uh -huh. Your door may never open when you run away to some other place until you are where the Lord has placed you. Let's read the Bible. Genesis chapter number 26. Genesis chapter 26. Verse 1. If you can underline that, underline. There was famine in the land besides the previous famine in Abraham's time. And Isaac went to Abimelech, the king of the Philistine in Gerah. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not, do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while and I will be with you and will bless you. For to, for to you and your descendants, I will give all this land and I will confirm the oath I swore to, swore to your father Abraham. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and will keep them all this land and through the offsprings all nations on earth will be blessed. Verse number 12. Isaac planted crops in that land. And the same year, I say the same year, the same year that there was famine, eh? And the same year reaped a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. You may be looking at your situation and not understanding it. Wherever you are, even in your marriage, you don't understand why you got yourself in, the, in this troubled marriage. I uh, don't want to talk so much about marriage, but let me talk about it. You don't understand why you are there. You are asking yourself, God, why did you allow me to be born in such a place? Why did you allow me to get into this relationship? And let me tell you something. God honors marriage. You may have gotten into marriage from the wrong footage. But once you are in Christ, there is a new thing. Hallelujah. The Lord is able to turn the tables round. So I want you to see, there was famine at one time when Abraham was there. And he had to go to Egypt because famine was so much. But now here comes a case of the son, Isaac. Famine has repeated itself again. And the Lord is careful to warn Isaac, listen to me Isaac, listen to me. Don't leave this land. Stay there. Where you think God cannot reach you, God can reach you. Where you think there is no grace for you, there is grace. Where you think you cannot be healed, you will be healed. Where you think you cannot be rich, you can be rich. Where you think there can never be peace, peace can abound. Am I talking to somebody? Because it is not about it is a 
situation. You may ask yourself, why did I come to do in Dandora? Why am I in Dandora? If it, was, if it was that, some of us would have run away. But we are here because we know the divine placement of God gives us grace. Am I talking to somebody? So Isaac stayed in his divine place despite the famine. And Isaac planted in that season. Planted in the same year despite how the weather was. Because we, our blessings, are not dictated by the weather. Uh -huh. Another point. You may find giants. Giants will appear. When you are on your way to your place. To your location. When you are going through the process. When you are progressing. Giants will come. One thing is that the devil is not happy when you are in God's assignment. Did you hear me? I said the devil is not going to hold his hands like this and watch you succeed. The devil will not hold his hands like this and watch you possess. He will not. But possession is our portion. I say possession is our portion. Whether the devil rises or not, we will conquer. And I want to say why we will conquer. We will conquer because God is with us. We will conquer because we have God's backing. We will conquer because we have authority. We will conquer because we have power. We will conquer because we have grace. God will never make a mistake. You may be feeling the pinch now. You may be feeling the pain now. But it is good to hold on and see what the Lord is doing. Because the end of it shall bring glory. The end of it shall bring glory. Let's read the Deuteronomy chapter number 20. Chapter number 2 as I conclude. Set out now and cross the unknown Gog. See, I have given into your hands Sihon and Amorite, the king of Heshbon, and his country, begin to take possession of it and engage him in battle. Did you hear that? Begin to take possession and engage him in battle. Hallelujah. The Lord has given us. The Lord has given us. What the Lord has given us is beyond money in the bank. It is grace. And grace is richer than money in the bank. You don't need to go to the US. You don't need to go to the US to break through. To break even. You just need grace. And the right place of assignment. Because you could be the person the Lord sent. To turn around the tables of Dandora Getare. And the people of Getare will be set free. And salvation will come down. And grace will abound. I say salvation will come. I say people are going to change. People will come to Christ. I don't know why the Lord has blessed you where he has blessed you. But he has blessed you divinely. And so hang on there. Contend. Rise and contend. Take it by force. Tell somebody take it by force. Take it by force. I want you to listen to me. The Bible says since the days of John the Baptist. The kingdom of God. Suffers violence. And the violent shall take it, shall take it, shall take it, shall take it by force. They will take it by force. I want to say, don't relax. Don't hold your hands. The devil is not happy at all. And that is why he has fought you. He has fought you forever because he knows your destiny is great. Now, if you had no destiny, the serpent will not appear. I repeat, if you had no destiny, the serpent would not have appeared. He appears because he knows you have a destiny. And when the serpent appears, do not lose your focus. Don't look at his direction. Look at what the Lord has said. Concentrate on what the Lord has given you. Fight and contend. Take it by force. Take it by force. We need divine placement. Say we need divine placement. God will never
never make a mistake in divine placement. You will harvest in famine. You will harvest in famine. And you will harvest bountiful in famine. In a place where people have despised, the Lord will come through for you. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless your name. Thank you for speaking to our hearts. May your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray.